All right, thanks for watching. And today I wanna to talk to you about one of my all time favorite PDE facts. It's called the Euler Poisson Darboux equation. And you have to understand, if an equation is named after one mathematician, it's very important. Well, here it's named after three mathematicians and Euler is one of them. So very, very important. So here's the setting. Suppose you have a solution of the wave equation. So UTT minus Laplacian of U equals zero, and that's in the whole space. So Rn times zero comma infinity. So here U is a function of space and time, where again, X is anywhere in Rn and time is positive. And we have initial conditions. So U of X zero equals G of X and ut of x0 equals h of x. So I give you an initial position and an initial velocity. Now, the question is, for this wave equation, is there a mean value formula? Because before what we did for Laplace's equation, we considered uh, the average okay, over any ball, okay, or the average over any sphere of bxr of u of y dy, okay. and we found, well, that's great for Laplace's equation, we got the value at the center. So it's, which is again of central importance uh, for Laplace's equation. And the question is, is there such an initial, an is there a similar analog for the wave equation? It turns out not quite. We don't have a mean value formula, but instead what we'll have is a mean value PDE called the Euler Poisson Darboux equation. So now let's consider the following. So let's fix X. Okay. So X will just be constant in, our, in this video and consider the following. Let phi of RT, where again, R is positive, it's a radius, and T is positive, it's a radius, to be the average over the ball centered of x and radius r of u at time t. So u of y t, ds of y, where s is surface measure. And the idea is simply, again, suppose you fix x and you take the average of u at time t over uh, that sphere. That average, we call it a phi. And again, for Laplace's equation, we found that this is just the value at the center. For the heat equation, we find something similar, except we have a different kind of ball. And, um, and here we have something slightly different. As I said, in this case, phi is not constant anymore, but instead it will satisfy a PDE, which is the following, and that's what I wanna show. So theorem, this average value, and again, by the way, this uh, slash integral just means the integral of u divided by the size of that ball. And so the theorem is, in this case, phi solves the Euler Poisson Darboux equation, PD, or in other words, it solves the EPD, <laughs> PDE, okay, which is the following, phi TT minus phi RR, so kind of like a wave equation, except you just have to add an extra term, minus N minus one over R phi R equals zero. So n, remember, is as in rn. It's just the dimension of our space. And this is an equation, so very important, in just two variables. It's an equation in r and an equation in t. So this is in the space 0 comma infinity times 0 comma infinity, because the radius is r and the time is t. So in other words, phi solves an easy differential equation in just two variables. Whereas before it solved it in n plus one variables. And don't forget about the initial conditions. So 
So we again have phi tt minus phi rr minus this equals zero. And uh, with initial conditions as follows, so phi of r comma zero, it's simply um, g of r, which is just to be defined the average of the original initial condition over uh, the ball, so over, sorry, the sphere, bxr, whereas a phi t r zero is just h of r, which is just defined to be the average of the initial velocity of h of y, the s of y. Okay. And this is easy to check. I will not check it. So you just use the definition of phi and you know g is defined to be that. But instead, let's do the more interesting part, namely the uh, PDE part. And again, I want to um, emphasize this looks very horrible, but it is like a wave equation. In fact, this is like a Laplacian, but in radial coordinates. So if you ever write down the Laplacian in polar coordinates, and there's a video on that, then the radial part is this. So it is indeed a wave equation, except, you know, kind of truncated. All right, so uh, let's do this. And again, I love this because the proof is absolutely phenomenal. So let me remind you of the definition of phi. Phi RT is just the average value of BXR, uh, U of YT, the S of Y. And in order to do that, let's first calculate the couple of partial derivatives. So let's calculate uh, phi of R of r, and again, this is just this derivative. So it's the integral of bxr, u of yt, ds of y, divided by, again, the measure of this ball. And I would like to remind you, the surface area of the sphere is just n alpha n r to the n minus 1, where alpha n is just the measure of the unit ball in rn. So it's a, the derivative of the volume. And you want to differentiate this. So, um, but before you differentiate, let's just use a change of variables because it's kind of horrible to differentiate an integral where the region depends on your variable. So let's quickly do a change of variables. So let z be y minus x, again, which centers that ball at zero, and divided by r, which makes this to a radius uh, one. And then if you calculate the Jacobian, and that was done in the video on the mean value formula of the um, Laplace's equation, you then get this, the Jacobian ds of z becomes uh, one over r to the n minus one ds of y, which tells you that ds of y becomes just cross multiplied r to the n minus one. Again, let's do this. R to the n minus one ds of z. Okay, so let's plug this back here. Again, what happens is on the one hand, you have the integral. This ball, again, we now have it centered at zero in radius one. So, or the integral over that uh, sphere. And then u, if z is y minus x over r, y becomes rz plus x, just so for solving for y. So u of x plus rz t. And then remember the Jacobian, r to the n minus 1 ds of z. And again, divided by n alpha n, r to the n minus 1. And remember, at the end, we want to differentiate this with respect to r. Now, this becomes way easier because the beautiful thing is this r to the n minus 1 uh, cancels out. And what you're left with is simply the derivative, again, this constant, 1 over n alpha n, times the derivative of this integral. But the beautiful thing is there's no r anymore. Everything is smooth. So you can just put the derivative inside the integral. 
So ux plus rz, t, with respect to r, dsc. And wait a moment, what time is it? Yes, it's Chen Lu time. So let's Chen Lu the stuff out of this. So one over n alpha n, again, integral over this uh, sphere. And let's see, so essentially all you do, you differentiate this with respect to x. I mean, you differentiate with respect to r, but what I mean is you differentiate in the first slot. So you do, uh, let's see, mm, du, where d is the derivative with respect to the first variables, uh, x plus rz comma t, and then you get z, but because you have vectors, you have to dot them, and then dsc. All right, very good, except it's kind of ugly now with this x plus rz, so let's just change variables back. Okay. So let y be x plus rz. All right, so now what happens when you change variables back? You have one over n alpha n, and then, um, Integral, so again, we're repositioning that ball to get, you know, the original ball bxr and then uh, du of y. Man, this is so much fun with the colors. yt dotted with, let's see. So if here I wrote something extra, but if y is x plus rz, then rz is y minus x. And so in particular, z is y minus x over r over r. And then, very important, here we had a ds of z. You want to write this in terms of dsy, again, our original variables. Here, you multiplied by r to the n minus 1, but since you're taking the reverse, you have to divide by r to the n minus 1. And again, if you're confused about this, uh, watch again the derivation of the mean value formula for Laplace's equation. All right, so then you have this, and then we can simplify this a little bit. So let's take this r to the n minus 1 back out. So n alpha n r to the n minus 1. This thing, dxr, du yt, dotted with y minus x over r, ds of y. And, and again, I will not write as an average because you'll see now this is Beautiful simplification. Now, what is this y minus x over r? So again, this is centered of x, and we have this point y. Then, first of all, y minus x is this vector that points outside to this ball. But because we're dividing by the length, it actually becomes r. It becomes of length 1. So y minus x over r is a vector that points outside of the unit ball and has length one, and that's precisely the unit normal vector to this ball or this sphere. So what you end up with is one over n alpha n r to the n minus one times this thing, bxr. Now, the derivative dotted with the normal vector, it's none other than the directional derivative and there's this beautiful, again, integration by parts formula that says, if you integrate the normal derivative, that's just the same thing as integrating the Laplacian. So it's the same thing as integrating the Laplacian, but not over the sphere, over the whole ball, bxr. So think of it as a fundamental theorem of calculus. If you integrate the second derivative over a ball, you get the first derivative over the boundary. That's how you have that. So it's just a divergence theorem, if you wish. Uh, all right, that's very good. Now, before, in Laplace's equation, we got zero and then we would be done. But here we have the wave equation. So this becomes the integral over the whole ball of utt dy. Okay, so just to recap, what have we found? We found that phi r equals one over n alpha n, r to the n minus one, 
integral over the whole ball of utt dy. And now, well, we ideally we would like to differentiate this again, but uh, there's still this annoying r to the n minus one factor. No problem though. Let's move it to the left hand side. So r to the n minus one phi r equals one over n alpha n integral over that ball u t t dy. And now we can differentiate with respect to r. And here's the awesome thing. If you differentiate the ball, it turns out you get the sphere. So one over n alpha n integral over the sphere u t t dy. Okay. And if you're a skeptic, here's why. The integral over the ball, the thing is the ball, you can write, think of the ball as an onion. You can write this in terms of shells. So the integral of any function over the ball is the same thing as integrating the radius. So think polar coordinates and integrating, if you want the angle, which here would be, you know, spheres. So bxs. And so if you differentiate that with respect to r and use the fundamental theorem of calculus, you get the integral of bx r of f for any function. All right, very good. So what have we found? We found r to the n minus one phi r. r is this. On the other hand, let's calculate the derivative of phi with respect to t. So that's like the next step, and again, almost done. Um, so we found, again, what was phi? It's one over n alpha n r to the n minus one. Again, just the average integral uh, bx r u the sy, and well, phi tt is much easier. You just differentiate this with respect to t. So u ds of y, and just do this twice with respect to t. And again, there's no r anymore, so you put that back into the integral, and you're left with 1 over n alpha n r to the n minus 1 integral of u t t ds of y. So this is phi t t. And wait a moment, this looks very familiar. Let's see. Well, again, after the technical difficulties. Yes, this is almost the same. Let's see. Um, this is almost the same as this expression, except I believe there's an r to the n minus one in the previous thing. So we just have to multiply by r to the n minus one. So if you want, that's one over r to the n minus one times one over n alpha n, integral of that, phi t t, ds phi, ds of y, and then, um, as I said, this becomes one over r to the n minus one. And then what did we have? We have r to the n minus one uh, phi r r. All right, again, let me just double check if that is correct. Yeah, r to the n phi r r r. And the last but not least, all you just need to do is just to expand this out. So uh, in the end, uh, we get the following. So this is phi t t equals one over r to the n minus one. And then let's see, if you differentiate this with respect to r, so you get n minus one r to the n minus two, phi of r plus r to the n minus one, phi r r. R, I'm a pirate now. And what you end up getting is, so we have n minus one, r to the n minus one, you know, r to the n minus two over r to the n minus one gives you one over r, phi of r, and then plus phi r r. Very good. And this is, if you remember, this is the Euler Poisson Darbou equation. Sorry, Euler Poisson Darbou equation. And in the next video, you'll see an amazing consequence of this because this will allow us to solve the wave equation actually in odd dimensions, so in uh, bigger than one, so in three dimensions, five dimensions, etc., etc. 
All right, I hope you like this. And if you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.